Hello, everybody. I would like to take just a couple of minutes to talk to you about how important communication is for an organization, for an institution, be it small, be it medium size, be it large, not only, but especially during a times of uh, crisis. So what I want to do now is to walk you through the major elements of crisis communication. Now, in an ideal world, we scholars differentiate between before, during, and after a crisis situation. Now, again, as I said, in an ideal world, an organization or institution, an association would have a crisis communication plan. And there are organizations that do have that, especially organizations, companies that are in a risky business that know that a crisis, that an incident will hit them at some point in time. Just think about airline companies, uh, big chemical companies. Uh, they are probably more vulnerable towards crisis than others. But again, in an ideal world, each organization should have a crisis plan. Now, as we all know, we don't live in this ideal world. So the crisis, this really unexpected and tremendous uh, crisis had, has hit all of us now. And um, all organizations, institutions, be it small, be it medium, be it large, have to cope with this crisis and also have to communicate uh, during this times of crisis. So let me outline five very important steps uh, or issues I would like to share with you when we talk about crisis communication. First of all, and that is, I would like to highlight this, put this in bold, uh, crisis communication is a top priority and it should be top priority to your CEO, minister, to your leader in the organization. Your leader, your CEO should liaise with the head of communication and you should identify a spokesperson for the crisis, a face that people recognize uh, that people build up trust with, and it is a kind of a communicative thread to, uh, throughout uh, the crisis. Someone who becomes familiar to each and every one of us through uh, these difficult times, and someone people built up trust to. And with this spokesperson, it might be the head of your communication unit, might be someone else. With this spokesperson, the CEO, the minister, the leader of the organization uh, teams up with. Be sure to train this spokesperson, whether it's media training, camera training, vocational training, social media training, just train him or her in exactly the needs he or she has. The second important point is that you have to identify your different stakeholders. We in communication uh, science call this stakeholder mapping. Now, what actually is a stakeholder? In my uh, seminars, I like to work with a very broad definition of the term stakeholder. And I go back here to Freeman's definition of a stakeholder. Uh, any individual or group that is or can be affected by your decisions, by what you uh, do. So if I think about my university uh, and think about the different stakeholders we have, just to walk you through a little exercise, what are our important stakeholders at the Hertie School? Well, first and foremost, of course, the students. The student body is our most important stakeholder group. A second very important stakeholder group, of course, is the faculty, the people that actually teach and work together with our students. Now, you can look at this as a very close stakeholder group, the faculty, but if you broaden that group, of course, our community of lecturers that work together with us and with the students, of course, is also part of this stakeholder group. 
A third group could be the administration, uh, the wonderful group of people that actually keep uh, our university going. Another stakeholder group could be prospective students. And you already get an idea, this list could, be, could go on and on and on. And what is important is that you address the needs of each stakeholder group, but that you also stay on message. That is, the core message of the university is adapted and massaged a little bit to the needs of every single stakeholder group. Now, if I stick with the example of the Hertie School, of course, the enrolled students, the most important message for them at the moment is stay safe. And we, as the Hertie School, keep on with our online teaching, online learning modules. That's something that's key to the students at the moment. Now, what is key to the prospective students, students that would like to join us in, in September? Probably it's not so much the online learning. It is, well, we work together with you on solutions that might be important in September, like, for example, visa issues, housing issues, but not so much the online learning. So you see every single stakeholder group needs a different different communication, needs a slightly uh, different message. But of course, the core message of the Hertie School still is stay safe, we care for you. So it's important that you identify the different stakeholders in your for your institution, for your uh, organization. That's the second uh, important uh, point. The third important point or step in a crisis communication plan is think about how you frame your message. Framing is a very important concept in uh, communication and media research. Framing is how you embed the issue, the message you want to bring across. Now, uh, linking it to the uh, corona crisis at the moment, um, you have probably realized in the way the Italian government is now framing its, uh, its message. I mean, Italy is in a has been through a you know tremendous uh, valley of sadness and has uh, so far recorded a large number of corona deaths but instead of reporting the rising death numbers uh, one could see that they have framed the message differently, they are now also reporting on the number of people that have actually overcome the uh, corona uh, virus and that have been healed and that are healthy again. So it's a different way of framing the message, a very important point, and there's a vast amount of literature out there. I think from an organizational uh, aspect, and my dear colleague Turit has also referred to how to organize uh, and administer a crisis, um, uh, organizing the communication is, of course, also very important Who actually delivers the message. So um, be very sure to have clearly assigned teams who does what. Who works through which channel? How is that linked to uh, one another? How do you monitor and handle responses? And who reacts to uh, the response? A very important uh, uh, point. So my final point, uh, and actually a an, uh, an very important point I would uh, like to make, is that in times of uncertainties, and that is what crisis is all about, it's a time of big uncertainty, trust is your currency. So be sure to build up trust, to build upon the trust you already uh, have created with your uh, stakeholders. Don't go for quick wins. Ethical standards are uh, key, and we're in this all together. 